Make sure you recover your AC system before doing any repairs. Here we have the high side location for the Schrader valve up here. And then the low side Schrader valve is located down here. So the low side Schrader valve is located here. To access it, we're gonna take this air duct rubber boot out. It just comes right out, set it aside. And now we can take that Schrader valve cover off. And we'll get our recovery machine and we'll hook up the gauges and take the Freon out of the system. It's low side and high side. Now that it's fully recovered, we're going to open that valve again and remove our high side connector and do the same to the low side. We need access through this fender well, so we're going to take the passenger right front tire off and then the fender skirt. Wheel lug nuts are 22 millimeter. <laughs> Sometimes I get stuck. So we have six Phillip head screws right here. We're going to take those out first. We have a couple of push pins here. We have one, two, and then three. So we're going to get some push pin tool, body tool, and just see if we can remove this. This one's behind the strut here. And then we have some three screws here, Phillips head screws by the mud flap. Should be able to grab this, pull this right out of the way. Then there is one last Phillips head screw hidden under that mud flap. Now we're going to grab this fender well and pull it out. Just be careful of dirt and debris for your eyes. So now we're going to remove this plastic shield so we can expose the compressor easily for the removal of it. They put this clip in backwards. Well, Probably not backwards, but it's backwards to us. So you can't get a tool in there and really pick it. So I'm going to take a flat screwdriver from the backside and see if I can push that center piece out. And now I can remove that. So there's one up here facing that way and two facing this way. Because it's plastic, it's kind of bendable, so just kindly fold it out this way and you can expose those two clips. Take a flathead screwdriver, see if we can start them. There's one. And then the other one is going to be up here. We're going to grab the tensioner here and take tension off the cert belt to remove it from the compressor. That's a half inch cutout, so we're going to use a half inch breaker bar. And I'm just going to make sure it goes securely in there. And I'm going to take tension off of the tensioner where I can easily slip the cert belt off. And bring it back, remove my tool, and take that belt right off that compressor. Just set this aside so there's no complication of how it goes back on.
So before we unbolt the compressor to the bracket, I'm going to take the AC line off. And that is a single bolt right there holding that compressor line, which has the high and the low side in it, taking it off the compressor. So we'll just take a 13 millimeter socket or wrench, take that long bolt out, and then discard the line to the side. If you hear any hissing of like the Freon coming out, there should be slight pressure in there. There's always a little bit of compression. Sorry. There's still always a little bit of pressure in the AC system, even though it's been e removed or recovered. And the bolt is probably about two inches, two and a half inches long. There we go. So now I'm gonna disconnect the electrical part of the compressor. Just take a flathead screwdriver. Go right in there and pop that off. While we're in this area, we're going to remove the back mounting bolt, 13 millimeter socket, and then we can move on to the other side. Now, technically, I don't think I have to take this thing all the way out. GM does this kind of nicely. They slot the actual AC compressor so that when we pull it from that way out, this bolt can stay right in place to guide it back in. I say, let's try it. We'll leave it like that. So now we're back in the passenger fender well and you can see the compressor and there's two mounting mechanisms. There's one's a bolt and one is a nut, 15 millimeter socket. I'm gonna take the nut off first because we are going to take that stud off, believe it or not. We need to take that stud completely out and that's why they put that inverted Torx head on it. So I'll probably do that first, loosen it up before the weight of the compressor is on it. So that inverted socket is an E8. So it's an inverted star, like a Torx. I'm gonna get on there and break that stud free. Okay. Last mounting bolt is right here, 15 millimeter socket. Let's break that free. As you can see, the compressor is going to drop down. There's nothing else holding it. The line is still kind of attached. So, and there is one more connector, I do believe, up on the top. We're going to drop the compressor so we have easier access to remove it. All I'm doing here is supporting the compressor to take the pressure off that bolt so I can keep spinning it by hand. There we go. That worked, that bolt is still there. And now we can see that other electrical connector. I'm gonna get my flathead screwdriver, bring it right in there. Pop that out, disconnect it. So the tab is right there, let's see if it works. Nice. Okay, so all that's holding this in now is this AC line. I'm just gonna rock it back and forth and pop it off. Try not to spill any of the compressor oil because we want to measure that. I can hear it kind of seeping out the air. Being aluminum, I really don't want to take anything and pry that because I'm not replacing the lines. Let's give it a little tap. Ok, 
Okay, so just keep wiggling that back and forth. You can see that it's starting to be removed. There we go. So now we can grab this compressor. Make sure you don't tip it. Don't let any of that oil out. Watch out for your O2 sensor and bring it right down. So now whenever replacing a compressor, they really want you to take the old compressor and tip it into a measuring cup because we need to measure the amount of oil that's in this compressor. Not that you're going to transfer it, you're going to put new oil in this. It should come pre-oiled, but once we measure this, we're going to measure what it is. We're also going to clean it after and measure what's in here. And then we're going to look at the specs. It's kind of redundant, but it's the way it's been done for 100 years since I've been doing it. So we want to see what kind of oil, how much oil comes out of this. So we're just going to measure it. And sometimes you get some oil, and sometimes you get no oil. And in this case, I think we're going to get no oil. And that would be the reason for the compressor failure. Well, it contributed to it, I'm sure. Yeah, we've got no oil coming out. So now I'm going to take the seal off of the new compressor, off the high side and the low side. And it, there should be oil in it. It's shipment oil. And I'm going to see how much is in there. I'm going to pour that out. Now, each compressor always holds an average of anywhere from three up to five ounces of PAG oil. It has to be PAG oil, it has to be compressor oil. Um, I like to turn the clutches because I can hear the mechanism in there to make sure all the oil comes out. So they're going to ship, usually ship it with just like one or two ounces at the most. And each manufacturer is different. So we're going to look up the manufacturer spec and get the proper amount of oil to put back in. The reason we do this is because you don't know how much has been shipped with it. So if you go to add, oh, it calls for 3.5 ounces in this compressor, and you add 3.5, and it already has two in there, you're over it's over oiled and you'll actually do damage. The warranty will be voided, so you need to make sure you get all the oil out to add the proper amount in. And as you can see, it's basically coming out of what I would like to call the low side. That's the bigger port. See how I just tip, tilt it and it just more comes out as it gathers in the back. So here, I'm letting it settle. I'm going to try it again, but this is two ounces. So basically, I'm almost at two ounces. It's halfway. So imagine if you called for three and a half ounces and this was still in there, it'd be over full and it would cause damage to that compressor. So we'll just keep making sure that we get the rest of it out. Okay. So now we're done emptying the oil that was shipped with it. I'm gonna empty this, clean it up, so I can add fresh PAG oil. So they supply new seals, which is perfect. And before I go through all assembling this, these are gonna go on the line after I clean the line up, take the old ones off. But I wanna make sure they're correct. And I'm just gonna plop them right in that center and make sure that they seat correctly and that they aren't overlapped. You don't want one that's too big and sticking it like that, that's gonna leak. So that's exactly what I'm looking for. And those look good. So now I'm just gonna remove those, get those ready for installation on the actual line. So I'll set those aside and we'll take them off the line, clean it up. So here we have the AC line where the compressor goes and I'm gonna take the old seals off. Just use a little flat screwdriver. Just peel those old seals right off. Look at that. Yeah, those are probably gonna leak real soon if they're not. Now I'm looking at the line, make sure it's not corroded, make sure there's no marks and everything will seat properly. I'll probably take a clean rag and I'll just wipe this down to make sure there's no debris left behind. So now I'm just gonna take my clean rag and I'm just gonna clean and make sure there's no debris and no burrs because that aluminum can get nicked. If the aluminum does, it'll break the seal 
and then obviously we'll have problems. So before I install the new seals, I like to add a little bit of fresh PAG oil to the cap. Make a little mess, that's what I do. And I'm just gonna drop those right in there. I wanna get them all soaked with fresh PAG oil. And then I'll just dump them out. And now I'm gonna go install those right in the line. I'm gonna put the low side on first. Try to center it and push it down evenly on both sides. That way it won't tear that rubber. So I clean my measuring cup and I'm gonna put, so this line right here is two ounces and I'm gonna put about 1.4 ounces in. I basically took about one ounce out, but I wanna put like 1.4 ounces in of clean peg. I'm going to install that right in the large port, that side. And you want to go slow because of the valve. If the valve is closed inside, the oil will just shoot right out, come right out. Sometimes you might have to turn the actual compressor to get that clutch to spin internally, that pump. We're going to do that anyways because we want to make sure it gets all Spun around in there. Seems uh, tedious, but if you are low on oil, you will damage the compressor and the AC system. So now I'm just going to turn this compressor, and you can hear it. Make sure that oil circulates in there. Now we're ready to install it back in the car. So now we're going to bring that new compressor up, make sure we get no dirt in, those, in this opening, the oil opening. And that bolt is still there, so we're going to use that back to line up. Make sure you don't tilt it too much to the point that the oil will come out. There we go. Okay. There we have it. Now, from this position, I can put this one bolt in and get it started by hand to hold it up in there. There it is, yep. Nice. Make sure you start it by hand. Now I'm gonna replace that stud without the nut on it. Don't forget to wiggle the compressor to center it. Perfect. Before I tighten up all the mounting bolts on this compressor, I'm now going to put this line on center. Hmm. There we go. And put the mounting bolt in. So now with a 13 millimeter socket, I'm gonna really snug this compressor line up before I torque it down.
13 millimeter on the back bolt. And we're just gonna snug it up. And just snug it. And now we're gonna move to the two front bolts. Now we can install the nut on that top stud. That's gonna be 15 millimeter socket. And we're gonna snug this right up. Same with the bottom. So now I'm gonna connect the connector on the lower part of this compressor before I torque everything up. Just make sure you hear that click and it's, it's in there. So the stud with the nut is 43 foot pounds, 15 millimeter socket. And the lower mounting bolt is 15 millimeter socket, 43 foot pounds. Tighten this back bolt to 12 foot pounds. So last thing, I'm, I'm gonna connect the top connector. There's this, this is the female end. It's the side of the actual compressor. And then the other connector's back there. So you might not see much, but I can't really see either. It's kind of a feel thing. And believe it or not, I got it on the first try. And there it is connected. Make sure I just tuck it up out of the way. And while I'm here, I'm just gonna grab that cert belt and get ready to put it right on that compressor. So now I'm gonna put the belt back on. So I'm gonna use my half inch breaker bar right in that tensioner. Make sure it goes in there. I'm gonna put a little tension on it. With my other hand, I'm gonna follow the belt right over that AC compressor. It might end up taking it off this crank because it'll be easier to guide that over. So I'll get it on the compressor. Make sure it's lined up with all, all the pulleys. Everything looks good. And then let's pull it right over the crank. Check the belt up on top, make sure it didn't come off. Everything looks good, ready to go. Now we're gonna put the shield in. There we go. And then this one, I'm gonna put it in this way so the next person doesn't have the headache that I had. So now we're gonna put the fender well back together. I like to, usually I like to try to line up the inner push pin. Let's find, there it is right there. So if I get that inner push pin lined up, it's pretty safe to go from there. So you'll have movement with the push pin in to line everything else up. Let's get that one in. Perfect. And now I'll put these screws in with the Phillips head. I'm gonna start from the center out. There's six total on the front.
Now I can follow that fender well, pop it up in all the way over. See how it sits, kind of falls naturally. Nice. And then I'm going to put the inner push pin in. I'm going to put that upper one in. Now I had that one screw on the inner edge that holds this fender well in before the mud flap goes on. All right? Put that one screw that mounts the fender well, put the mud flap up, and line up these three bolts. Now we're going to put the wheel back on. That's a 22 millimeter socket. I'm going to snug it up in the star pattern. Now I'm going to get the uh, torque wrench and torque it to manufacturer spec. Wheel torque is 130. It's 130 foot pounds. One last time. Now I'm ready to recharge my system. So I'm gonna actually hook up my machine and I'm gonna vacuum the system, add some more PAG oil to the system and then add the Freon. Now the system's done charging, we're going to disconnect our connectors and reconnect the caps. And replace that air boot.